In this video, I'm going to show you three finishing touches that you can add to your reports to give it a bit of a more professional look. I'm going to show you how easy it is to include them in your reports and also why you should think about adding them in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So when you work with Power BI reports, you can be overwhelmed with the amount of features that you can use, but you can sometimes forget to add the finishing touches that sets your reports apart from the rest. So today I'm going to show you some of my favorite ones. They're going to be easy to implement and easy to reuse to give your reports a bit more of a professional look. So the first thing that you might want to think about adding in your report is a refresh date. This refresh date shows your users when the data in your report was last refreshed. There, now there are lots of ways to do this, but the simplest way to do it is in Power Query. So let's go to Power Query here. Let's hit transform. And in here, we're going to create a new table. Uh, to do that, you just uh, click enter data here. We'll leave one of these columns blank. We'll just uh, leave it as it is. And then we'll just name this one defaults for now. So it will be an empty table with one row that has no value. Now, what we can do from here is to create a new custom column. We're going to name this one uh, refresh date and in the custom column formula we're going to type date time dot local now so this function is pretty much the same as the today or now function in excel or index in that it returns a time and date value if you press ok there you go and there you go so you now have a table or a column within a table that contains the refresh date of your model so let's load it into our data set here so we'll hit close and load we'll just give it a few seconds here and then we'll create a new text box just give this one last refresh can't see it because the font is black, so we'll just change that into white. And here we're gonna add the new value that we created, which is let's say max of refresh dates. And there you go. So you now have a text that shows your users when your data set was last refreshed. So what's uh, good about this is that we can uh, put this anywhere in our report here. So let's say we can just put it in the corner here. And then you can just copy and paste this to the different pages that you have in your report. So in this case, we just add it here on the bottom right. And the reason why we didn't just type the uh, date here manually, which we could have done so, is uh, if you have multiple pages, for example, and you want to change the last refresh date, you want to tie it into a uh, formula or on a calculated column, similar to what we've done just now. And the reason why we had to create this default table with the current uh, dates is because we want to make sure that if the data set was refreshed, it gets updated in a single place, in which case in our new table that we've created in the defaults table. And that change will automatically cascade in all of our pages if we have multiple pages. So essentially you, instead of writing it manually one by one on every single page, we just change it into the defaults table and it will change across all your pages if you have a lot. The second reason why we added it into a table is because this date that we have now in this last refresh text box will not get updated until you hit the refresh button. So basically today is 9th of December. 
if we open this report again tomorrow, which will be the 10th of December, it will still show the 9th and it will only show the 10th of December until we hit the refresh button, essentially refreshing the data sets of this report. So this last refresh lets your users easily distinguish when the report data is valid for. So this is especially useful if you have reports that are not frequently refreshed. The next one that you can add in your reports is versioning. So if you work or release Power BI reports before, you'll know that sometimes you have to make changes uh, to your report. So maybe you want to uh, change your slicer or maybe add a new chart. And when you do this often enough, it can become really difficult to keep track of all the changes you're making. So this is where versioning becomes really important. So basically, every time you make a significant change to the report, maybe you want to change the filter slicers, or maybe you want to add a new chart, you mark your report with a version, say 1.2 or 1.3, then you log all the changes that you've made to your report in a documentation. So that way, all changes are logged in this document. So this workflow of versioning is not just helpful for you to find out what uh, you've done in the past or what other versions include, but for your users as well, um, it will help them uh, when it comes to using or finding information about your report. So to add the versioning label in your report, we can follow the same method that we used for the last refresh date. So we're going to go to Power Query again. We can go to default here. Uh, and we're not going to recreate a new query. We're just going to reuse this one um, and just add some more details here. So instead of making this one empty, we're just going to name this one version. And let's say we're just going to name this one 1.0. Let's see. So there's a change type here. It just We just delete that because that uh, was trying to change the column type to something else. So now we have the version number in our default query. So we just hit close and load and just wait for it. Uh, we're going to add a new text box. Uh, we're just going to copy and paste this one. And we're going to name this one. Well, we're going to just type version. And then we're going to use dynamic uh, smart narratives once again. So we're going to say max of version. You just make sure that we get a scalar value from this query. Hit save. Just make sure it's the same format as the other one. And there you go. So we can just plop it in here somewhere in your reports. So let's put it here on the bottom left and, you know, just copy and paste it in all your pages the same way that you've done with the last refresh date. So again, the idea with this version is it lets your users know what version of the report that they're looking at. And again, we've put it in a default Power Query so that uh, if we have multiple pages and we want to show the version number on all those pages, we only just need to change the value on the defaults table that we've created and it will cascade that change across all our pages. The next one that you can add is a help or information page for your users. So this one is very simple to add, but it can be of a great help to your users when it comes to using your report. So this can come in many different forms. It could be, let's say, a glossary of your different business definitions. It could be a jargon buster for your acronyms, or it could be how to just use and interact with the report. So I want to show you this page that I created in PowerPoint. This is a pre-created help page that I made for my YouTube analytics uh, Power BI reports. And it's basically a quick guide on how to use the Power BI report. It tells you information like how to interact with the report, how to read and interpret the charts and graphs. If you want to get a hold of this report, you can get it through my website or through my coffee site. So as you can see here, it's just an image. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this into our report to create a help page for our users to be able to go to. So we're going to go back to our Power BI report here. Uh, we're going to create a new page here. We're going to just name this one help. And we're going to hide this. 
So we're hiding this page because we want to create a button instead from each of the pages to go to the help page. We don't want uh, a separate page, help page to be showing for the users. We want a button to redirect to it, but you can do either or it doesn't matter. So under the format pane here, we're going to change the page background to this new image that we've pre-created. I'm going to change the transparency to zero and we're going to make the fit uh, image to fit. So there's uh, something on the top there because we don't have any data in this uh, page. So I'm just going to copy one of these. So let's add the last refresh date here. So here you go. So you now have a page, a help page that your users can go to if they need help. Uh, let's create a button for it then in this case. So we're going to add a new button. So we're going to create insert button help. So you can just have the icon. We're just going to have the icon now. We're just going to make it just a little bit tiny like this. And you can add this anywhere in your report. So in this case, we're just going to add it on top here. And we're going to change the action to go to your help page. So page navigation, help. And we can simply just copy and paste this on all the different pages that you have in your report. So when they click on that, it will take them to the help page. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to implement some finishing touches to give your reports a bit more of a professional look. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.